Hey everybody, welcome back to A Brief on Grief. Today I'm here fully, fully inspired by the fabulous Brene Brown. Um, she released her book, very a new book very recently, The Atlas of the Heart. And I was listening to a podcast last night with her and her sisters, where her sisters were actually interviewing her on her podcast <laughs> about her new book. And I haven't cracked the book yet. It's here for anybody that's interested. Atlas of the Heart, um, because I'm hoping to be reading it in an upcoming book club here, like in January, February, so I'm trying not to crack it. But it's already inspiring me just being in my life and listening to Brene and her sisters talk about it. Um, so w the conversation I was listening to last night with them, um, Brene was highlighting how that we have su such a limited vocabulary for the emotions and the experiences that we go through as humans, right? That we all go through these common emotions and common experiences that we go through. We have limited vocabulary and limited language. And when we have limited language to speak what we're going through and the experiences we're experiencing, um, it leads to not being able to speak our truth about things, right? Because A, we're maybe not even sure if we can identify the emotions that we feel and then having that vocab to express it like this is the emotion I'm feeling this is whatever right and it's and it's the way we were grown up way we, we may not have been um, we may not have been taught to speak about emotions we may not have been in a family where different different emotions were spoken a lot maybe there was one predominant emotion as Brene and her family had um, mentioned that anger was the predominant emotion in their family so it was very safe to say you were angry or pissed off or you were enraged but it was, they didn't have the vocabulary or the safety and permission to be like, you really hurt my feelings, or I feel sad, or I feel brokenhearted, or any of the other range of, she says, 87 emotions and experiences that she goes through in this book. So when that's limited, when we have a limited ability to speak what we're going through, it keeps us isolated in our experiences. And, and it makes us feel like we're the only ones going through it. Like we're the only ones struggling. We're the only ones grieving. We're the only ones feeling like alone and lost. Maybe like we're failing in life or just all these different emotions that we feel, we feel alone in them. So that's the shame, right? Then we start judging and shaming ourselves that there's something wrong with us and everybody else seems so happy and is going through life and, and surviving, but maybe you at that point don't feel like you are. So she had talked about how the energy of this book was kind of about normalizing emotions, normalizing the human experience of emotions um, and giving language to those different emotions and experiences that we feel. Um, again, allowing us to, be, to talk about it, to initiate conversations with the people we love, initiate conversations with our kids, just build that vocabulary around emotions and experiences and and it's all I mean it's all about shame resilience is what I see right which is Brene's Brene's jam right she's all about um, shame she's known as a shame researcher the vulnerability and courage researcher so this I see this whole book is like it's like a, a shame resilience atlas <laughs> basically right if there's not only stories in there um, um, about some of her experiences I, I understand with different emotions um, and some of the uh, people that she studied with their experience with different emotions, but it's also going through some definitions of what these actual emotions are and what they feel like and stuff. So it's, it's a, I think it's gonna be an amazing book to initiate conversations between people. And that's what we need, right? Because these are our common experiences, right? To normalize something is to create connection between us all because really when we speak about these emotions and speak about our troubles speak about our grief and our loss we're normalizing that we're we're and we're building connection instead of isolating ourselves based on shame so and that resonated so deeply with me because i then thought this is what i'm doing with this series this is the energy behind this grief and loss series right now is to normalize the experience of emotional loss and the grief that we experience. And not only to 
highlight the obvious grief and loss, which we all kind of know about the, when we lose somebody to a death or the end of a relationship <laughs> ends, but to normalize it as a daily, almost a daily experience. Um, so to normalize that we experience loss and grief nearly every single day if we're thinking about failed bids of connection, like a loss of connection with somebody, or losses of expectations, hopes, and dreams for something for our life or our future or for a relationship that we're in. It's just that we experience that stuff every day, but nobody knows that as loss and nobody recognizes that as grief. So this is my journey with grief and loss with this series and my passion behind it. It just mirrors what Brene's book is about. Is that passion, she has a passion for normalizing shame and vulnerability in the human experience as expressed now in this latest book too. And I, shame is also in there because shame is very powerful emotion involved in grief and it does affect the way we grieve so I have this passion about normalizing grief and loss and the shame in it and yeah it was just it really resonated with me and it was <laughs> it almost normalized our not normalized but connected us in our journeys of the similar things that we're doing and I think what so many people are doing when we're grounding in our like greatest light and greatest magnificence inside of ourselves as human beings living fuller wholehearted lives and then sharing that with the world sharing our gifts and sharing the wisdom and our personal stories with people to normalize the human experience right i mean that's what it's all about <laughs> what what shuts us down more than feeling grief and shame and suffering and pain and then and isolating ourselves thinking we're the only ones right there's there is nothing that we struggle more with as humans than that so and there's nothing more that disconnects us from other human beings than that so there's always suffering in separateness and there's always love and healing in connection so this is about connecting and about loving and healing so yeah goodness <laughs> my heart's just expanded the but yeah, I loved, I loved that, that bringing normalcy, that bringing normalcy or normalizing the human experience, especially our human experience of suffering, so that it brings connection and empathy instead of isolation and shame. So, mm, okay. <laughs> um, that's about it for today. <laughs> Again, Atlas of the Heart, if you guys are interested. Um, it's available in bookstores now, I think, as of last week. So I highly recommend it, even though I've just perused it a little bit and I'm trying to patiently wait <laughs> until my book club starts it. So, okay, everybody, I'll see you next time.